So we are at the second problem on the application of the work energy theorem. And the problem reads, a soccer ball with a mass of 0 0.420 kilogram is initially moving with a speed of 2 meters per second. And a soccer player kicks the ball exerting a constant, fo constant force of a magnitude 40 newtons in the same direction as the ball's motion. Over what distance must the player's foot be in contact with the ball to increase the speed to 6 meters per second? So as I've said, and in any, I think you must might find this uh, annoying, in any physics problem, I would always advise the student to have, or you to have, a mental picture and an illustration of the problem so that you can better analyze the problem. So I have already here the sketch of the problem. So if you notice, I made um, points A, points B, and point C, um, just to denote that at this specific point, these are the values that I should note. So the problem says that um, it's initially moving with a speed of 2 meters per second. That's why at point A, it has a velocity of 2 meters per second. Now after that one, we move to point B. This is now the instance where you have a soccer player that kicked the ball and it exerts a force of magnitude 40 newtons. That's why I illustrated a point B over here. Okay, I don't like that, the arrow there. So it has, at point B, it has a, uh, an application of 40 newton force. And of course, as you would expect from Newton's second law, you, you should expect then that from point A to point B, it is still moving at a constant velocity, implying that the forces are balanced. So forces balance, meaning the sum of F is just zero. Now, upon the application of the 40 Newton's force, you should expect that the object will accelerate, or this, the object will accelerate. That means to say, from 2 meters per second at that point, you should expect it to go higher than that value. So that is what you are seeing here. That's why at point C, um, it has now a velocity of 6 meters per second. And of course, it follows from, it's, it's logical to expect that in this problem. Now, um, basically what the uh, problem is asking is the distance. So it's very clear here over what distance must the force acts or must the player's foot be in contact with the ball so that it could have that um, given velocity of 6 meters per second. So I'm just going to um, write something here, the given in the problem, which will be helpful. We have the mass of the ball, which is 0 0.420 kilo kilograms. Uh, we have also um, force net, the applied net force at point B, which is 40 newtons. And then we are looking for, so find our displacement over which the force must um, act on that ball. So, yep, this is still a problem of work energy theorem because, again, uh, work energy theorem simplifies our problem instead of approaching the problem na mag kinematics as well as dynamics or Newton's law separately. I mean, it could be simplified using the work energy theorem. So using the work energy theorem, since this is already our second problem, and if you haven't um, checked out the first problem, I recommend you try to um, watch that first. The work energy theorem says not just the work, but the network or the total work is equal to the object's change in its kinetic energy, right? So also, this is something that I already discussed, the one in the recall section over here from the previous video, that since we are basically looking at network, um, we could express it as F net D cos and theta. So I'm considering the case where your theta is equal to zero since the force and the displacement is lying on the same direction. So we end up with F net is equal to, I mean, work net is just equal to F net multiplied by the displacement. It means to say that our left-hand side of the equation could just be expressed as F net multiplied by the displacement. And then over the um, right-hand side, that will just be further um, expanded into 1 half M final velocity squared minus 1 half M uh, initial velocity or V naught squared, right? 
So from there, um, you notice that we are seeing what we are looking for here. That's that the variable D, that is what we are looking for. But um, you also notice again that on the side of the equation over here, you have a common factor. So to simplify the calculation later, let's factor it out, factor out that first. So that would become one half, you factor out one half M. So what is left is you have the final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared. All right, since we are just looking for the displacement T, as I've said in our class, I am going to find all means. Even though that means is at the end of the world, I will find a means to isolate my displacement T. So that means to say I have to multiply both sides by 1 over F net or simply divide by F net. That's the same thing. So when I do that, I would end up with an equation for displacement D, which is just equal to 1 half multiplied by the mass of the ball, Vf squared minus V naught squared, and everything is divided by F net. And over here, the next task would be to simply um, plug in the appropriate values for the velocities. So Vf and V0, or initial velocity. Now you should have a correct value for this one, and that this is where the sketch would be very helpful. So if you're looking for the final velocity, you, you should take the velocity at point C, so this is your Vf, and the initial velocity prior to or at the moment of the application of the force is simply your velocity at point B. And you cannot interchange that one because that will give you a different value. I mean, uh, just a negative value. So uh, for the displacement then, um, that could be just further expressed as D is equal to one half of the mass of the ball. Vf, as I've said, is just Vc squared minus V naught squared is just Vb squared. So you simply replace it with the appropriate velocities. And then you divide it by the applied force or the net force in that case. So if I'm going to uh, continue with this one, this will become one half. The mass as given in the problem is 0 0.420 kilograms, 0 0.420 0 kilograms. And then uh, final velocity at point C is six meters per second. So do not forget that that is squared minus the initial velocity, which is Two meters per second, 2.00 meters per second, and that is also squared. And everything is divided by the applied force, which is equivalent to 40 newtons. All right, so let's try to inspect the uh, units, whether the units match up. So we should expect to get a unit of meter since displacement is a unit of length. Now, uh, checking the, um, I don't like that one, so maybe checking the units. Because this will be helpful in order for us to realize whether we plugged in a missing var values or unnecessary values in our equation. So we have in the numerator kilograms, so meter over second squared will be meter squared all over second squared. And the denominator is Newton, but we knew from our class that Newton could just be expressed as kilogram multiplied by meters per second squared. And upon inspection, kilogram will cancel out, second squared will cancel out, and one of the meter unit will cancel out, leaving behind M. And this is a very good news because this should be our expected value. So when you try to plug in these values in your calculator, you should end up with a displacement that is equal to 0 0.168 meters. Okay, so this is the displacement, or in centimeters, that's approximately um, maybe like 17 or 16.8 centimeters. Now, that means to say that this 40 Newton force, in order to change the velocity of your soccer ball from 2 meters per second to 6 meters per second, that 40 Newton force must be in contact with the ball for a distance of or displacement of 0. 168 and that is the displacement from point b to point c okay so that is how you interpret the problem so i think this is the last problem for the work energy theorem the following sections will deal with um, maybe calculating almost the same problem but in terms of energies or the conservation of energy principles